six ton that weed. Big belter, I think, but that's it, stuck in the ground now. The prop shaft is set on fire. I think it would be rude not to. Morning, Holly. Here we are, we coming. Good morning, it's actually the day before. I'm just yoking on the sprayer, taking it along the road with me because tomorrow morning I'm going to go and spray, spray off some barley. All the winter barley, other than seed crops, you don't spray off seed crops because it can affect germination. Yoke that up, go and sort out chemical for the morning. We're good to go for the morning. So, good morning. Let's get spraying. All right, ready to go. PTO on. Fill it up on a thousand just so you don't need to rev the hell out of the tractor. That was a dunk tip. Right, set up, good to go. Screens on, PTO's on. This is what we're using today, Roundup Energy. We're spraying that on at 2.5 litres a hectare, and that is to kill off the crop, any volunteers or weeds that are through it, and to even out the field. 3,280 litres later. Dad's feeding the cows this morning just so I can get going with the spray. Look at them all. Nice and settled because the wild one's gone. Anyway, I have got four, no, 20, 35 hectares to spray um, of winter barley. So we'll get that done, shouldn't take too long, be done by kind of 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So this year with the glyphosate, it's effectively double the price. Glyphosate's the product you use to kill off the crop. You don't need to kill off the crop, you can let it ripen naturally, which we will do to some fields. But with these fields, there's quite a lot of uh, green strips through the tram lines. The tram lines are very raw. And in theory, I mean, it makes your quality of um, your product going into the grain dryer better. Grain dryer should use less kerosene. Uh, it should be an easier thresh on the combines to so use less diesel there. So there's two ways to look at that. But these fields we're going to spray off. Scrap with a tree. So here's this barley crop. It's looking really well, to be honest. Peas have filled out. They're actually quite firm, you know. We are bandit. That feels a bit less than 10 days off than me. There's a lot of ripeness there. So we'll just get moving with this. <laughs> so we'll just get going with this. Kick it on now. See the ons building up round about the PTO shaft down there. All going well from here for the next 10 days. It should be a fairly high yielding crop this. We're cruising. Nice even crop actually this field. It was looking a bit um, uneven throughout the year, but just the last month or so it's really evened off. You can see across the field it just doesn't change. All dead level. It's fairly stiff. Don't want to speak too soon on that. You get a deluge of rain that goes flat, but touch wood will not get that. I made a bit of a pig's ear of uh, auto steer there. Nice one. Field number one, done. Still got the tree. Field two. Field number two, done and dusted. Off to field three. She moves like she don't care. Smooth as silk, cool as air. Another one. That's the tank empty. This field's done. Off to number four. That's another field of winter barley and not spraying because it's grown for seed. And with seed crops, you don't spray them off because it has, it can have a, an adverse effect on germination. Whereas the other winter crops, they're just for feed, so germination isn't important. When I say seed crop, it means we're growing it, it'll be harvested, sent to a grain merchant who will then process it, treat it, and then send it out to farmers across the country who will re-sow it in the ground. So it's seed stock to sow for next season. Field number four, and the last field. There's a lot of wheat in the Endrix here, which is fine because it's a field for feed. It's just spraying it off to kill it, obviously, because the wheat will ripen a lot later and the barley. We'll give it a bit of liquid sunshine, and when we come to combine the barley, that wheat will be dead as well. I'm going in for it again. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it for a thread. Just getting round the tractor and pulling out all the Oh, and just piles and piles and piles of them. They just wedge up in any gap they can find. I guess they're a bit of a fire risk. I'm not sure whether they would ignite, but I don't really want to find out, so... Go around and unpack all the chunks. 
it's maybe an indicator that we should have been in here last week but it's blown a hooli last week so this has kind of been the first calm day for a while it was either today or not at all look at them flipping ons everywhere just builds up and sits up here and wedges in gaps and sits in round the pump there so anyway that's all cleared up question in the guard that's on the prop shaft this bit this pink chunk of metal is it normal for that to be fairly warm i'd say temperature same temperature as a scotch pie you'd pick up at the cattle market that kind of hot i asked that because this tractor is the only one of the tractors that hasn't had the prop shaft set on fire and um, the other two within an hour of each other carting gravel uh, went on fire seems to be a semi-common thing with um, these are the case equivalent case are pretty much same tractor as this spraying done just on top of the dryer at the moment new conveyor that's gone in sparky was wiring it up and basically there's two nuts on this side i don't know if you can see them in there one's now two bolts there one's now missing uh, so obviously i got to put nuts on the end of them and this one's popped up you can see where it's caught one of the paddles so it's taken a wee chunk out of it and um, where it's hit the boat sparky heard it uh, falling down the dryer and then turned it off and then obviously found that was the issue so i'll get this panel off the top and then i need to replace one of these and put nuts on the end of both of them obviously just missed that anyway these things happen There we go. So this one here, where my finger is, the nut basically must have, with vibration, jumped up and got caught by a paddle and taken that way and away down the chute into the dryer. Should be it back in action one last thing to do is wire the trip switch in here to the motor or via i don't know sparky knows what he's doing anyway so that so that when you open that automatically shuts off the motor so this isn't running so you open that and this will stop immediately so you can't lose a hand or an arm just been sent samples of barley and wheat at specific moistures so that we can calibrate our own moisture meters so our moisture meters where are they here's one Grainmaster Prometer, no, prot Protometer, there you go, Grainmaster Protometer or whatever you call that, anyway, this is one of the meters and we've got another black one somewhere. So this is meter number one, so you turn it on, press on again, measure, barley, so we'll go for barley first, and there's a nine there, that means you fill this nine mil up and then pour it into here, so 11 mils for other products, most of the cereals are nine mil, I think the rape is 11 mil. Let's whack that full of barley, there we go. Not a very clean sample, it's got wheat in it. Anyway, right, put that in there, twizzle that, this crushes it all up. And you keep turning until it stops turning. That's it. Test. Reading number two. 13 dead. So we've got 13 dead, 12 9 and 12 8. So an average of 12.9. Which the barley was meant to be 12 9. So that is perfect. Right, do exactly the same with wheat. Bang, there we go, wheat, same again, 9 mil. So we go. So this, hopefully, what's the wheat? Wheat, we're shooting for 13.8, apparently, the sample is. Let's have a look. Test. And hopefully, we're in about 13.8. What number are we getting? Ah, that's pretty good. 13.6. Second time lucky. Come on. 13.7. This is way better than I was expecting. 13.7. Number three on wheat. 13.8. Oh, that is beautiful. 
13.8 with an average of 13.7. Wheat we're shooting 13.8, we actually got 13.7, so only 0.1 out, and that we were zero out. It was 12.9 average, which is a smiley face. I'll do this other meter, but to be honest, if we know that's accurate, we'll never use this because this one's way quicker. Don't like using this moisture meter. You grind it up the top and then it falls into that and then you you move this switch and then you squeeze that down and press it onto the probe and oh, this is just a much nicer thing to use. So this one, you fill up that wee hopper bit, close that, turn this bit which crushes the wheat or mills it. Keep going, keep going. And then you line up wee markers with the cross and then you slide this wee thing all the way across and then when you turn this it puts a plunger down and puts pressure on the sample so this will come to a halt soon it'll click there you go that's it clicked and now a search oh it's not turning on what's going wrong here does it run off a battery that'll be deed that'll be why nah this needs a new battery and i don't have any of them kicking about but what I would have done is clicked that and clicked wheat and then it would have come up with a percentage. But the fact that this came back is very accurate, very pleasing. It's quite good to be able to test it and know accurately within 0.1 or 0.2 that um, you're correct. Because when you send it away, they can phone back and say, no, 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 that's at 16% when you thought it was at 14% and that will incur a price penalty of X amount per tonne. And it's like, well, um, no, sling a hook tested it accurately and this has been calibrated now effectively and that had a discrepancy of well if you take an average of those two you point zero five out of what's an average between those two 13.4 what's actually 13.35 but that's good enough 0 0.05 out of 13.4 times 100 what's that as a percentage they use the calculator, but yeah, 0.37% out um, over six readings on wheat and barley. So if they come back and say it's 10% out to what we sent them, then they're chatting nonsense. And I'll go and get a battery for this so we can uh, just check where this is sitting as well. So we know that if we test something and we definitely need to know the result of it, we've got two testers that are accurate. The reason we use moisture meters is um, if we're going into a new crop to combine, we kind of want to know roughly where it is moisture level to, to know whether it's ripe and ready to go. You can kind of tell by hand, we don't really use it that often for that. When we're drying crops and it's coming off the dryer, um, to know that we're kind of within tolerance, we're shooting with the cereal crops for about 14%. So it gives us an accurate reading as to where it is coming off the grain dryer. The higher the moisture level in the grain when it's being stored, um, the less time you can keep it for in storage. Otherwise it goes off, it grows mold, it goes minging. 14% and you're pretty much, you can keep it forever. There's the tar machine because, and two rollers because they've been laying tar over here. How does this machine work anyway? I've never actually looked at them. Big like plates along the bottom on what looks like, I don't know if they're, I think they're mounted on a, like an eccentric motor so that they vibrate as they, as they move along to, give it a bit of compaction. But basically, tar goes in that end, goes along a wee conveyor, or a chain that drags the tar in through that gap, then comes along here, auger spreads it out, so it's spread across the whole width, and then it's packed in or flattened with these plates that I think are on like eccentric motors. Yeah, you can see it in there, There's, it's mounted offset from center so that it'll vibrate up and down as it as it trundles along packs it in and then they'll come in with the rollers as well which results in a finish like that presumably they've got like a top layer to go obviously if there's a wee lip there so they're not finished but i'm not sure if the whole thing gets another top layer it must do because they won't want to come into a fine finish so they must the whole thing must get another layer of something i'm not too sure i know nothing about tar but there we are that sign got moved the other day actually dug out um, and shifted into there and it all shifted and didn't fall into pieces six ton that weighed big belter i think but that's it stuck in the ground now got shifted didn't fall apart and now it's sitting where it's sitting and uh, we're going to cut out a uh, tar round about it and lay a bit of grass just to make it look a bit less kind of corporate and give it a bit of green to it a bit of a, a bit of farm to it i think anyway that's us new car park and entrance a few days from being finished basically 
ready for action. Well, I'm saying that's ready for action. This bit's been used already by quite a lot of cars on the weekends. Specifically the weekends that we need it. We're kind of all right during the weekdays. First piece of kit, getting lined up for a wash. This trailer. This can get abandoned in this gap. Just shift these posts out of the way, which hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to figure out where these are going. Will that fit in that gap? Like a glove, anyway. Tidying up these door labs and then back into the shed, shift more stuff about. The farm's just that's uh, looking quite untidy at the moment to be honest. Dads need more water. Could do with the fent arriving, um, it's not arrived. Um, I've sent her a message asking ETA, no reply yet. Right, the brush, it's on the bucket still. That brush hasn't been taken off that bucket for about five months. Right, brush is ready to go. Dad's just got a wee bit more of the wall to do in there, so just giving this yard a quick sweep out here, and then he'll be finishing there and I can get the rest of that done. Wee thing that helps when doing this, crab steering when you're going up and down, and then instead of having water spilling out both sides of the bucket when you're washing, it just pushes it all to one side, then you do it off the other wall going the other way, and you get it all streak in the middle. Yeah, so right now, if I was going straight, there'd be water spewing out that way, spewing out that way, I'm at an angle so it's only going that way. Just saves you cleaning up the other side of it all the time. Dad's giving that trailer a wash. It's looking a bit better now. It was manky for a while but free harvest wash. Too much water about at the moment. I'm just pushing sludge about so I'm just taking as much as I can off it and I'll come back and do it in the morning once it's a wee bit drier and it'll pick up a lot better. And while Dad's washing I've got the other uh, power washer set up, put a forklift in there and a bucket and whatnot and just wash a few more bits of bobs while we're at it. I think it would be rude not to. I, I couldn't not do it. There we go. Forklift done, trailer's done. Get it out while it's sunshiny and breezy. Try it out. Slight progress, getting there. Chuck this forklift outside to dry. I can't see anything, it's steamed up in here. Subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, the red button down in one of those two corners, I never get it right, click subscribe, and the thumbs up. Four fingers, don't you? And the thumbs up, click the thumbs up, click like, cheers. Things this year just seem to be coming in so thick and fast. Probably right now seems worse because Kev's on his holidays. This year we're kind of down on half or three quarters of pressure because Dunk retired, well, semi retired, so he's going to drive the combine and bits and bobs. But some flowers are coming on a lot quicker than last year. The container, we're getting that sorted out. There's just, they're just, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know. Just seems very busy. It, I don't like saying things are busy because everyone's busy, everyone's got a lot to do, so it just, uh, it's fine. It just seems a wee bit more busy than usual. And then it doesn't help when you waste time and get pictures like this. Anyway, things are starting to gear up for harvest. Starting to clean all the kit. Combine needs a clean, the other trailer needs a clean. Uh, probably clean one of the old trailers as well, just a bit, a bit of a backup or spare. Forklift's now cleaned, shed's not finished. The fent is finally technically got a delivery time today or whatever. Wednesday, so it's Monday today, so Wednesday it is going to arrive, apparently. I was thinking it'd be last week, end of last week. Anyway, it's going to come when it comes. Wednesday, they kind of geared up to give us a day kind of training on it. Um, but I don't have a day to spare at the moment, so I think it'll just be a couple of hours, just show us a few bits and bobs. And we'll figure out some time um, later. Anyway, cheers for watching. That's still propped up so that any water running in it can run out. Let it dry off. It's quite a breezy, airy night and it's warm, so it'll be fine to dry off like that. I'll see you tomorrow. I could hide neath the wings of the bluebird as she sings.